A train derailment in Ohio exposes the EPA. Let's check it out. Welcome to Rob Schmidt tonight. For years, the government through the EPA and its health agencies has warned Americans about the dangers of vinyl chloride, a colorless chemical used in material production, an extremely toxic substance so volatile that it actually boils at seven degrees Fahrenheit. Inhaling this substance reportedly burns like acid. And 10 days ago, a train carrying nearly a million gallons of vinyl chloride and massive amounts of other dangerous substances as well derailed in eastern Ohio, right on the outskirts of East Palestine, about an hour northwest of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You've probably seen some of the video, 20 of the 150 cars carrying vinyl chloride and other highly toxic chemicals. The crash was horrendous in that part of eastern Ohio. Massive amounts of this boiling chemical pouring out from a number of train cars all over the ground in this area of our country, dumping into the land, into the water, into the atmosphere of a very small Ohio town. Vinyl chloride is evidently lethal when it is burned, and yet that's exactly what your government chose to do with this. They set a massive bonfire of dangerous chemicals eight days ago, as this was evidently the safest method of removal of this substance and the others. Now the pictures from this, as you can see right here on the screen, are astonishing to see. Maybe even more astonishing, less than two days after the EPA advised that loads of vinyl chloride was dumped and then burned into the air above eastern Ohio, the same government agency that promised that the air near the World Trade Center was safe after 9-11 told residents of East Palestine that it was safe to go home telling them the air was fine and the water in a town where many people drink from wells was fine as well, safe to drink. And with that, thousands of people returned home. And then many of them started noticing some problems. There was hundreds. Russell Murphy is referring to the fish now belly up in Leslie Run. He and his wife noticed them last night, barely 48 hours after the fiery derailment, five miles away. Amanda Brashears was going to feed her five hens and rooster this morning when she discovered them all lifeless, practically in the same position, with no signs of a predator entering their enclosure. Streams of dead fish. Here's video of those fish being scooped right out of the water. The creek bed there. You saw dead chickens as well. There's one farmer reporting that foxes that roamed his property are sick and dying. It's bad news. Now, to be fair, it does take a lot less to kill a fish and a chicken than a human being. But at the same time, there should be a healthy distrust for any government agency, especially one as corrupted as the EPA. And in a story like this, we don't still know quite a bit. But what we're learning is somewhat disturbing. Of course, the EPA has proven time and time again that it prioritizes saving the government's face and avoiding scandal far more than actually protecting the health and well-being of the American people. From an article from The Intercept from about 18 months ago, senior staff have made chemicals appear safer, sometimes dodging restrictions on their use by minimizing the estimates of how much is released into the environment. That's your EPA at work. The EPA operates a lot like the FDA in that manner. Years and years of regulating very large companies resulting in relationships between the top brass of the EPA and the companies that are looking for lax regulation. As far as how this train derailment occurred, Pete Buttigieg is Biden's Secretary of Transportation and Mayor Pete has yet another black guy in the wake of this disaster. Here he was today actually talking about trains, just not the one that just derailed and dumped dangerous toxins all over eastern Ohio. Railroad crossing elimination is probably not going to be one of the most famous parts of this law, right. uh, but it's one of my favorites, and it's one that I know can make a difference in your communities. Good to know. Meanwhile, there have been two more derailments in South Carolina and Texas today, so you can guess that transportation virtue signaling is not keeping this country as safe as Pete would like it to be. We shouldn't be surprised by Pete ignoring this disaster. There's been shockingly little coverage of what's happening in eastern Ohio because, of course, the people in power 
don't want this to be a scandal. Far ahead of actually protecting you is the real top priority, which is controlling you. Something we learned during COVID in East Palestine could be another reminder. Joining me now is a resident of East Palestine, Ohio, Kayla Ward. Thank you so much uh, for being on. Um, I, I understand that you have a lot of concerns. Obviously, it looks like you're back in your home. Um, do you think that it's safe to be there? Um, I'm actually not back in my home. I'm still staying with family members. I've chosen to okay. permanently leave my home. You, you, you permanently left, and, and, and now you're, you're far enough away. Uh, the EPA is saying it's safe to be in back at home and where you were. Why do you not trust that? Well, I was told that I can go back home, but I wanted to have my air tested before I actually went home. Mm -hmm. And I had a company called CTH come and test my air. And they went all throughout my home, and they detected less than 0 0.1, like, of any chemicals uh, in the air or anything. And so they decided they were going to leave. Well, I heard a train coming by, so I stopped them. And when they returned, they were testing the air while the train was coming by. And they detected up to 60 VOCS ppm in the air while the tra train was going by. And I have an eight-month-old baby, and I do not know what she could be breathing in every time a train goes by my house. So that is why so, I've chosen to permanently leave. So, so you're saying that when, when something happens, let's say if, if there's gusts of wind or if a train, obviously you're close to the train, to the train tracks, if something stirs up the atmosphere, you believe that it's just going to kick all of this back up again? Yes, I believe that it's going to take a lot longer to clean up than just two days than us returning home. And every time a train comes by, they detected those chemicals on their machines. So I don't trust it, and I have no idea when those chemicals won't be kicked up into the air. Your, your, your neighbors are finding, you know, creeks full of dead fish. You've got yes. dead chickens. You've got fox dying, you know, in, in, in areas of your community. I, I don't know what other kinds of animals uh, are dying from this. The, how much how much faith do you put in, in the EPA and in the government to tell you that it's safe to be there? I mean, how much do you think that they really believe that, or are they just trying to avoid some uh, you know something that's going to damage the reputation? I honestly believe that they are just trying to put everyone back in their homes and pretend like nothing happened, because there's just no way that they're seeing chemicals on their machines and it's okay to breathe in. They told me that those chemicals could not be recorded or written down because it is considered short-term exposure. But those wow. trains go by how many times a day? So how many times of short-term exposure is it full exposure to these chemicals? I understand why you'd be skeptical. I think a lot of us are. Kayla Ward uh, with a small child in eastern Ohio. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Yep, thank you. All right, Steve Malloy worked in Donald Trump's EPA transition team. He knows more than anyone uh, what this administration is really like, and he joins us now. It's, it's good to have you back on the show. So it's, it's close to a million gallons of a substance that we've been told is very highly toxic and very dangerous. They burn it up in a huge plume of smoke that, that could be seen from actually planes flying over. Um, what, how do you assess the situation? Well, so... You know, the problem here is that we really don't know what exposures are on the ground. I mean, the good news with vinyl chloride is that it evaporates quickly. The bad news is that the government won't tell us what's there. And we have a government and an EPA who, for the last 50 years, have been scaring the bejesus out of people with, you know, any exposure to any chemical. And so it's kind of ironic that, you know, now we have this major accident um, all this vinyl chloride going in the air, and who knows what else? I mean, we don't know what other chemicals were there, and it's it's okay, it's no problem. Um, you know, recall what happened after 9/11. The first responders, EPA said the air was okay. Well, uh, you know, apparently it wasn't. Um, you know, the government thought that the burn pits in during the Gulf War in Iraq, Afghanistan were okay, and apparently they weren't. Uh, why should anyone trust the government with how they? What's what's what would be the I'm trying to picture what an agenda would be in a moment like this for the EPA to just kind of give an all clear and let people go back into their homes. Obviously, you know, this this would be, you know, if, if you had to displace thousands of people that live in this area, that's a crisis that I guess government wouldn't want. Well, uh, you know, who knows? I mean, because, you know, we, we, we can't trust anybody. I mean, it could just be 
CYA. Uh, you know, EPA represents the government. Maybe there are other problems with that are going on here. You know, the tracks. You know, who knows who's to blame for this? I mean, right. Norfolk Southern is going to get sued. Uh, the government will have no accountability. It should. You know, so this is the uh, government uh, toxic toxicological profile for vinyl chloride. I can't use it. Nobody else can because we don't know what the exposures are because EPA won't come out and say. Wow. You know, this is information that the public has a right to know. Everybody needs to know so they can assess whatever risks there are going forward. Uh, vinyl chloride is very toxic. Um, but, you know, once again, it, you know, the dose makes the poison. We have to know um, what the dose is. We have to know what the other chemicals are. And no one is telling they're, us. They're and, saying... And this is, I, I, they're saying close to a million, from what I read from a congressman in New York, his, a tweet that he put out said it was a million gallons of just vinyl chloride. That sounds like a tremendous amount. No, it is a tremendous amount. And, and once again, you know, the good news is that if it hasn't burned up already, it's evaporating. Now, yeah. I'll also just you know, ask viewers to imagine, imagine this had happened to the Trump EPA versus the Biden EPA. I mean, there would be a media meltdown. <laughs> yeah. Right? Right. That's a very good point. Steve Malloy, you know better than anyone. Thank you so much for taking the time. We appreciate it.